The mobile phone is a beautiful thing. It literally is the entire world in the palm of your hand. It connects you to loved ones. You have instant news when you want it. You have movies and shows on demand. Now combined with the power of the internet, it opens up the door to endless possibilities. But your phone's battery is low. At 15%, your phone's gone slower as its processors begin to shut down. At 5%, you now know that you've got to look for that charger. Your phone's shut down and now you're wondering whether combining those red beans in that candy crush level was a smart idea. Your phone needs a recharge so that it can go back to what it was doing best. And I think it's best to ask yourself at this time, do I need a recharge too? We humans, we are a beautiful and a complex machine. Everything is synced to perfection and just like every other machine out there, at the end of the day, the week, the month and the year, it needs to recharge its batteries, the mind, the heart and the soul. But before you begin to wonder if I am here to give a talk on cell phones, I'm not, I'll stop. It's as it is more of my husband's thing. Though the recharge to your batteries that I am talking about is travel. For starters, I'm one of you. Just another person going about her daily life. Just another person who's lived through the past year with you. Just another person who's surviving this year as well with you. Just another person who's living it one day at a time with hope. I'm an army brat who moved around the country with her parents, went to college, got a job, met the love of my life, an army brat and an army officer himself. And before you knew it, I was packing and unpacking those black boxes as we moved around the country ourselves. In our seven years of marriage, we've shifted seven houses. Believe me, I pack like a pro. But apart from shifting houses on a pretty much yearly basis, there is one thing we've been doing religiously. We travel. Every year, we as a couple, we pack up our bags and we travel for a month. Now, the reason I stand here today is because 2020, and unfortunately 2021 as well, has affected something which is really close to my heart, travel. It has affected what I believe is the most important facet of human life, something that separates us from the rest, human interaction. It has affected that sensory sugar explosion of that fleeting glance in the street, the hum of traffic on the road, the chatter of people in a bar, the sound of that solitary busker in that alley, the smell of that sizzling tadka at that lone dhaba on the highway. The sound of native tongues you don't understand. The sound, the smell, the feels and the tastes are all inputs that we need to recharge our batteries. Unfortunately, the pandemic has numbed all these senses in a way we could never have comprehended before. Now, to be honest, I thought a lot on how I wanted to go about my talk today. Everybody already knows about the joys of travel, about how it revitalizes our senses, how it broadens our horizons and how it makes us all a little better. So today I'll be sharing four little stories with you. Stories that have sparked joy in my heart. Stories that have made such a profound impact on me as a person. Stories that have motivated me to travel more. And today I wish to relive all these moments with you. So the first time we ever traveled abroad was to the magical city of Paris. Now we had initially decided just to spend a day or two there before proceeding towards the south of France. But we loved the city so much that we decided to stay there for a lot longer. And while we were there, we explored a lot on foot. So now on one such day, after a long day of walking, because my husband's a big conjuice and refused to spend on cab fare, we decided to get out of the summer sun and sit at one of the many cafes that dot the street. Now, it was a slow day and we were drenched in sweat. But our first reaction was to ask the barista for their complimentary Wi-Fi password, which she gave us almost immediately. Now, she came with our drinks and we sipped at them lazily while we were browsing through our phones, which was buzzing with updates from friends and family back home. Now she came back after a while asking us if we wanted to refresh our drinks or if we wanted something else. And while we were browsing through the menu, she pointed at us and she asked us if we were dating. 
Now in those days, me and my husband we used to wear our wedding rings, so we showed them to her. To which she guessed if we were engaged. Me and my husband smiled, looked at her, and told her that we were married. She very dramatically waved her hand in the air and she said, "This is Paris. This is the city of love. Your entire world is sitting across the table from you. Talk to each other. Share your stories with each other." And then she pointed to our phones and she said, "They can wait." Our next round of drinks had a sticky note with a smiley face and a heart drawn on them. But in that moment, in that instant, she basically summed up something that is plaguing our society right now: the need to stay connected virtually. So much so that the very essence of human interaction is debased. I've learned that the best forged connections are the ones which are made face to face, organic and real. So trust me when I say this, go out, talk more, live more and laugh more with the ones you love. Now we've all heard how age is just a number, right? And conversely, we also hear people talking about the fact how their glory days are behind them and that's a major restriction on travel. So me and my husband we were sitting back at the Barcelona beach in Barcelona just doing what you do at a beach relax when an elderly couple caught our eye and we couldn't help but smile so the couple definitely septuagenarian they were walking along the water line him in his loud yellow boat shorts and her in her white bathing suit nothing out of the ordinary right well the gentleman was walking holding on to crutches and the lady was walking right by his side holding on to his arm so as to support him if he happened to fall and also at the same time ensuring that the gentle surf touched his feet as it ebbed and flowed my eyes literally filled up with joy i asked my husband if we will ever be like that to which he peeped up from his book and he said if you want us to be so i asked myself Do I want to be like that when I'm older? Yes, definitely yes. If everything in my life winds up to a moment as simple as that, I have lived a good life with those I love. So now moving on, me and my husband we were sitting at this cafe in Hanoi, Vietnam, drinking a cold beer on a warm evening. Now there were crowds of backpackers moving across the street. There was the hustle and bustle of the old quarters. and a hum of music from the neighboring street filled the air now an elderly british gentleman he came and he sat down on the bench there were benches in that cafe and ordered a beer suddenly he spotted someone on the street and yelled loudly in vietnamese i'm guessing that he'd been here before on many an occasion it turned out to be a shoe shine boy well a grown up man actually and they both hugged and smiled he ordered him a beer and they both sat down at the bench and as tradition says they both clink their beers together in cheers before every sip now me and my husband we were very amused at the interaction the gentleman turned around and told us that this was the best shoe shine boy in the whole of hanoi no the whole of vietnam to which they both laughed heartily clanked their beers and took another sip he told us that he'd been coming to vietnam regularly for the past 20 years and this was the only person in the whole country he trusted with his shoes to which the shoe shine boy was humbled he bowed his head he clanked his beer and he took another sip it is so good to be appreciated and it is so good if you appreciate someone's work as well we out here we generally tend to skip on that thank you or shabash especially to those people who work day and night being seen yet unseen there is no work to big or to small a little pat on the back and a thank you has never hurt anyone but it definitely makes someone day at least so my husband had gotten himself terribly sunburnt in spain the devil's itch it's called it was all right for a while but then the redness on his back just worsened so we were running around looking for a medical store for some ointment at about 9 o'clock at night we found one general store open and we rushed in the shopkeeper he looked at us he smiled and he immediately pointed us towards the section of the medicated aloe and the post sunburn treatment now i'm guessing with my husband scratching his back half the time he figured it out while we were at the billing counter he asked us that where were we from 
to which a standard reply was Delhi. He said that he was from Rawalpindi, Pakistan, and before we could say anything else, he said, "Aap mere bhai behen ho. Border ke dono par aap aur ham jaise log hi rehte hain. Aajab hamare saath hamare ghar do roti todo." Now I understand that there is always this tenuous undercurrent between both our nations, but his words just seem to make them all go away. His kind eyes and simple but profound statement still resonates with me even today, and it always manages to bring a smile to my face. Every day that I have travelled seems to have added days to my life, just like the fast charge battery. Every day that I have travelled has made me hopeful for what tomorrow is going to be like. Every moment of my travel has made me reaffirm my faith in the fact. that we are moving towards better things my travels make me want to be a better person show kindness compassion and empathy live and really be present in every moment be appreciative of what i have and share that with others it makes me want to challenge myself to new adventures it makes me want to roam explore and travel Now I am sure that each one of you out here has some beautiful stories to share from lands abroad to the wonders one's own country has to offer. I am sure that each one of you has a beautiful moment waiting to be unlocked and I'm also sure that each one of you has a lovely story waiting to happen somewhere. Share these stories with the ones you love. Inspire them to move around on this beautiful planet of ours. travel and make real connections as you do so as that is the only way we will become a wholesome community just like we were meant to be sharing your stories with people known and unknown forging bonds with people known and unknown is definitely going to spark the hope for a better tomorrow stay safe and hopefully we shall see you on the road someday thank you